Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video, we're going to carry on with what we were creating in the previous video. In that video, we've seen how we can implement the create and retrieve operations on a blog that we had created using PHP and MySQL. So in this video, we're going to add on to it and implement the update and delete operations as well. So let's get this started. So this is what we had created in the previous video. So we have a create new post button and when you click on that, you'll have the option to give in the title and some dummy text and you can click on add post and that post will be added and as you can see here we also have implemented an alert that's going to showcase that the post has been added successfully and now we also have the post here so now what we want to happen is that whenever we click on this read more we have to go to a page where we can actually view the blog post so for that let's go to the project once again and in here where we have the read more in the index page let's add in view dot php as the href attribute so whenever you click on this read more you'll be redirected to view.php but we don't have that file as of yet so first we have to create that so let's go to the project structure and in here let's create a new file called as view.php so now if you save this and go to the browser and if you click on read more you'll be redirected to view.php so now if you want to actually display the blog post in this page then what we have to do is that along with this view.php, we also have to pass in the ID of the particular blog post that we want to display. So I'll add in the query parameter. And since we want the ID, and that has to be equal to the particular ID that we currently have. And that ID is present inside the queue variable. So let's initiate a PHP tag. And in here, let's echo out the ID that we have present inside this queue variable. So let's save that, go to the browser, go back, refresh the page, and let's click on read more once again. And this time, as you can see here, along with this view.php, we also have access to the ID, and that is currently equal to five. So now let's go to the project, and in here, if we want to actually display the text, we also have to first retrieve the data. So let's go to the logic.php page, and in here, let's write a query to actually retrieve the data from the database. So the first thing that we have to do is that we have to check whether the URL consists of a variable called as ID. So let's request that and let's check if it contains a variable or a query parameter called as ID. And if it is present in the URL, that means we're trying to access a particular blog post. So let's take that ID and equate it to a variable called as ID. And now let's write a query to actually retrieve the data. So what we actually have here is that we have a query in which we have written as select star from data where the ID is equal to dollar ID. And this dollar ID is what we had got from the URL. And once we have the query, we're gonna pass in to the MySQL I connect and we're gonna execute that. And once it has been executed, it's gonna return us the blog post and we're gonna add that to a variable called as query. So now we have the data present inside a variable called as query. So let's go to the view.php and let's copy everything that we have inside index.php and paste it inside view.php. And we also have to make sure that we have this logic.php inside the view as well. Let's go down and in here, let's remove everything that we have inside the container. And then let's initialize a for each loop to actually output the data. And inside this, let's create a division. And inside this division, let's initialize a h1 and let's output the title that we have. And below this division, let's create a paragraph tag. And in here, let's output the content. And go to the browser and refresh it once again. Oh yeah, we forgot, it's not MySQL like connect, it's MySQL like query. So let's save that and refresh the page once again. So as you can see here, we have the title and we have the content. So now let's stylize this and make it look a bit more appealing to the eyes. Uh, 
Okay, so let's save that, go to the browser and refresh it once again. All right, so we have the data, that is we have the title and we have the content. So now we need to make it so that we can edit this content. So let's add a button inside this division that we have. So inside this division, below the H1, let's create another division. In here, let's create an anchor tag and the text for this anchor tag is gonna be edit. And as for the href attribute, it's gonna be edit.php. Then along with this, we're gonna pass in the ID as well. Go back, refresh the page, and let's click on read more once again. So this is the exact same thing that we had done in the index page as well. And one more thing that you have to keep in mind is that this query is not equal to this query that we have. So what's happening inside the logic.php is that we had initialized the query here, this is the variable that we had, and inside the if condition, the query that we had created, both of these are different, okay? And right now we're accessing the data which is present inside the query, okay? It has been overwritten. So the data that we have inside this query has been overwritten with this data that we had got from the database, okay? So now we're using that data and we're outputting it here. So that's why you're not getting the data that we had got from this particular function, okay? It has been overwritten. So now what we want to do is that along with this edit, we also want to have a delete option as well. So inside this division, let's create a form. So we have one way of doing this. That way is to actually create an anchor tag and make it so that we can click on that and we can do some operations. The second way is that we can write a form as well. So let's create that form. And in here, the method is going to be post. And inside this form, let's create an input tag. And we also want to have a button and the button is going to be delete. So the reason why that we have an input tag is that whenever we click on this button, along with this data, that is the button itself, we want to also pass in the ID. So to actually pass in the ID, we want to have an input tag, which contains the ID present inside of it. But since we don't want the input tag to be visible to the user, let's make it so that it is hidden. So we can just type in hidden and that will be hidden. Now we want it to consist of a name and that name is going to be ID. And the value that it's going to contain is the ID itself. So let's create a PHP tag here and let's echo out the ID. So whenever we click on this delete button, a request is going to be sent. And in that request, we're going to have access to the ID parameter. So now let's stylize this to make it look a bit more better. So what I just did is that I've applied the flex properties to this content present inside the division and I made it so that the content is justified to the center and also the items are aligned to the center as well. And also I have made it so that this delete button is going to be a color of danger that is red and it's going to be a small button. And this edit button is going to be of color light which is similar to white. So let's save that, go to the browser and refresh it once again. So we have the delete and edit options as well. So now if you click on this edit button, we'll be redirected to edit.php and we also have access to the ID. But since we don't have that file, we have to create it. So let's go to the project once again. And in here, let's create that file. So now let's refresh the page and we have the file. So now we want to be able to actually edit the data, right? So let's go to this create page and copy everything that we have since the content is going to be similar to the create page. So let's save that. Go to the browser and refresh. So now what we want to happen is that since we have access to the ID, we're going to get the data once again using that ID and we're going to add that data to this input and this text area. So what we're going to do is that, so we're going to call this condition that we have here once again. And what we're going to do next is that we're going to take that data and output here inside the input and this text area. So let's create a for loop once again. So let's remove this form that we have from here and let's paste it in between these two tags. Now let's output the data. So by default, we want this input to contain the title. So here let's type in a value property and for that, value 
And for that, let's pass in the PHP. And here, let's echo out the title. Similarly, we want the same thing to happen with the text area as well. So let's copy this and we can do that by actually placing this PHP tags in between the opening and closing text area tags. So let's save that and let's remove the title from here. Let's type in content, save that, go to the browser and refresh once again. And as you can see here, we have the title and the content. So now we have to change the text of this button and also when we click on this button automatically that data has to be updated in the database as well. So let's do that. Let's remove this add post and type in update and whenever we click on this update button automatically the title and the content has to be sent to the database and also along with that let's create a hidden input tag and in this hidden input tag let's type in the id that we have for this particular blog post. So the name is going to be id and the value is going to be id. So let's save that. So now we can take this data that is the id, the title and the text area that is the content itself and let's update that in the database. So let's write in another if condition and we're going to check if we have a query called as update in the url and before doing that let's go to the edit page and in here let's change this name to be update okay so now we can check if the url consists of update so let's remove this from here update so now if it contains update then we need to actually get the data that is the id the title and the content so let's retrieve that from the url so we can copy this from there and also let's copy this id as well okay so we can take the id title and content. Now we need to write a query to update it and the query is going to be so it's going to be update data and set the title is equal to the variable title the content is going to be the variable content where the id is equal to the variable id and you have to make sure as the title and content are string data type you have to add in the quotations and since the id is of integer type you don't need to add the quotations so once you've written the query you can execute that query so once the query has been executed we have to go back to the index page so let's copy this header that we have here and let's paste it here and let's change the info from added to update it. Let's save that and go to the index page and in here let's write an else condition else if let's copy this and in here let's paste it and check if this info is equal to updated and if it is equal to updated we want to create another alert so let's close this php tag And the alert is going to be the post has been updated successfully. So that's how you can write if and else of conditions directly inside a PHP block. So let's save that, go to the browser and let's refresh it. And now let's type in something else. Let's click on update. So as you can see here, the post has been updated successfully. So now if you click on read more, as you can see here, the new data has been added. So you can click on edit and add that data from here once again. So now the last thing that we want to happen is that when we click on this delete button, the post has to be deleted. So let's go back to the view.php and in here, whenever we click on this delete, it has to create another query and it has to delete that particular blog post. So let's give a name to this and we're going to type in delete. So if we have delete inside the URL, then we have to delete that particular blog post. So let's go to the logic page and in here, let's write this. So let's copy this from here. Let's copy this and paste it here. And inside this if block, let's check if we have delete. And if we have this ID inside the URL, then we want a particular query to be executed. And that is going to be delete from data where ID is equal to dollar ID. So let's save that and once it has been deleted, 
let's copy this and paste it here and instead of updated let's type in delete and inside the index page let's copy this once again and let's paste it here let's remove this we don't need that anymore and in here let's check if it is deleted and here it has to be deleted as well so it has to be deleted and it's not going to be an alert of success it's going to be an alert of danger and the post has been deleted successfully so let's save that go to the browser refresh it and let's click on delete so the post has been deleted successfully so as you can see here we don't have that post anymore so if you want you can click on this and click on delete and that will be deleted as well so that's it for this video guys i hope you like what you've seen till now if you did then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video